not here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am. Uh, you can see what's going on today. Today is YouTube recording day. There's lots of stuff still to set up. I'm not ready to start yet. I'm not. Clearly, today's a day when I'm not going to be able to spend a whole lot of time reading the chat and, and talking back and forth with you. I've just got to get set up here and make my talk, and you guys can watch while I while I do the talk. So you're pretty much on your own today. Before I do start, I want to check a couple of things. I've got the main camera running, which will record the YouTube video. That's over here. Then I've got this camera here, which has nothing to do with the video, but is streaming. And we've got another camera, hello back there, which is the one that's normally outside. But what I don't know is audio. I've, I'm set up, I record the audio for the video itself onto a separate digital recorder. But I don't know how that's flowing through to Twitch. So I'll need a bit of feedback on this. this is question one, do you have audio? Is there audio? Sound is low. Okay, no problem. Let's boost this. Up, 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 up. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is where I will be standing and speaking. Is that audio flowing through the headphone monitor into the Twitch setup? Is the audio basically okay for you? Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. How it changes maybe once I've started recording, I really don't know. I know. Anyway, whatever. I'm going to do a couple of dry runs here first because I've got to set up my teleprompter. I've got a foot switch at the bottom here underneath my, my uh, you can't see all the details here, whatever. The setup is this. There's a camera behind my homemade teleprompter. There's a computer on the stand in front of it running Acrobat Reader, which has got my what do you call them? Index cards? Prompt cards? It's like points to talk about. I have a foot switch that flips ahead to the next card or flips back to the card before it. But the foot switch is noisy. So what we've done, and we've done this before every time, I've brought my down comforter down from upstairs and it's on the floor and underneath it my foot goes under it and can I find the foot switch? Yes, there we are. There's a forward switch and a backward switch. And if I get them mixed up, you will hear about it. In front of me, there's a Zoom digital recorder. Once we start, that will be placed out of sight. I will have a mic on myself. And on the stand here, we are going to look at a few things. And also, the reason I'm rolling this together, Twitch and YouTube, is because today we are opening a little box. And I wanted to do it, of course, live on Twitch. And I also wanted to do it for YouTube. The paper is out and I've had my swim. It's all, <laughs> it's been, it's been quite a morning. The sound may indeed be weird because it's running through that Zoom recorder, headphone monitor output into the video input card over to that camera back here to the computer. But if it's manageable, I'd like to leave it. The sound is set really for the YouTube video. So if you guys are okay with this, if it's not, I know, if it's not too strange, I'd like to leave it. Slightly too boosted. Okay, it says minus 8.6 dB. Let's pull it back down to minus 10.2 dB. Okay, okay. John, let me do a bit of a dry run here. You guys take care of yourself for a while. Mods can chat with you. I sent some images to the mods about our setup here. It's fine, don't talk too loud here. here. And also I sent a link to a, to a separate Twitch streamer, a guy dropped by yesterday afternoon. A guy dropped by while we were working here yesterday afternoon and he was from Czechoslovakia. And at first, I wasn't sure if he could actually speak English, but it seems it was okay. And he uh, he knew about us and wanted to put us on his, his visit to Asaksa. Okay, Twitch Unfortunately, that's too noisy, so down comes the heater, and it's going to get cold in here.
fooling with the mic here, it might distort or crackle. Sorry, just a second. The audio should be back. The microphone is here on my chest. I think we're okay, but I can no longer move. Let's see. Yeah, you said the heater noise wasn't that bad. It wasn't bad for you, but it's very bad. It's in a digital recorder, and there's no way I can get it out when we're trying to do the proper editing on the YouTube video. So I know that the Twitch is okay. Twitch is live and come and go and throw it away. But we're also making a YouTube video here. And the audio for those is much more difficult and much more strict, much more severe. Okay, uh, I'll do a test run. I've got to set up the camera. So that means again, so any number of times today, I'm sorry, I'll be plugging and unplugging the mic. So headphones, here we go. Unplugging. The towel just fell down.
Audio standby. Audio recording, testing, one, two, three. Video, red light, video is recording, one, two, three. It looks like we have a test. Where's my foot switch? Gonna stand on one leg for the whole thing here. Okay, just a test of a couple of minutes here. The whole present, this is the third part of the YouTube presentation. It's gonna be our year-end update video. And this is not starting from the beginning. There's part one, which talks about the business itself, the finances, how we're doing. There's part two, which talks about this year's print series and next year's print series. And then there is part three, which is going to be the wrap-up. But it's about a 15-minute wrap-up. And that's what I'm recording here first. I haven't done part one or part two yet. We will get to those later. So what you're gonna see here, the reason I'm doing this is because of what I said, that uh, box which we need to open on Twitch as well. So anyway, let's give this a try. I'll need a sound sync. Okay, so much for the prints themselves. What's next? Now, this point in last year's update message, I think my eyes got brighter and I eagerly brought out two prints from our eight views of cats to show you. They had turned out very well, as you can see from these images, and I was so happy to have them finished. Well, here we are, I guess it's a year later. Do I have any more cats to show you? Well, in a word, I'm sorry, no. This isn't from lack of interest on my part, nor on the part of potential designers. More than a year ago, I decided on the images for the next two prints in the series, and work has been underway. The block set for Evening Bell was completed long ago. Perhaps even I showed it in the last update video, and the block set for Descending Geese is now nearly finished. The problem at this end has been finding printing time for this. You saw the growth of those bars on the sales graph I showed you a few minutes ago. And every millimeter of those bars represents, not dozens, hundreds of woodblock prints. The planning, the sizing, and the printing. One color, another color, sheet by sheet by sheet. It has been an absolutely insane amount of work for our entire team this past year. But we did it. We covered the orders and we got the prints made and out the door. But the downside has been that a lot of other things simply did not get done. Proof copies of the Evening Bell. My God, I've got dozens and dozens of proof copies of the Evening Bell, but we still have no final version yet. The color blocks for Descending Geese, we're ready to proof those. No idea how long that's going to take. Ramen cats. Do you remember ramen cats? This picture might jog your memory. That's the third design in the Sushi Cat series. The blocks were done when I was a little kid, I don't remember, and they're still waiting for the next round of proofing. Zenkoji, the temple, the Bono Dodi picture at Zenkoji Temple. Do you remember that one? It's not even had its initial proofing yet. Then there are tools. I get emails, our wonderful little tool set. We've been talking about that now for years. Look at these photos. We have drawers full of blades, handles, string, the brass sleeves are all ready, but just no time or, or, or staff to help us get it put all together. On top of that, for the tools, I'm not sure if I should talk about this because it might just be too disheartening. The craftsmen who we contracted to make the top blank group of the range of blades we plan to offer, he let us know in October that he was retiring. Actually, not planning to retire, he had already retired. He had become 70. He has no successor, he's had enough. There will be no more blades from him. That reminds me of an episode a few weeks back. I had a phone call from the family who makes our paper, the only paper in this entire country that suits our demanding requirements. A phone call from our paper maker. My heart stopped. Luckily, it wasn't that phone call. <laughs> he just wanted to clarify something with one of our orders. But for a couple of seconds there, I was thinking it was all over. 
and, and, and it'll continue to, this is just a test, so let me have a look, let me stop this here for a minute and check the light and the sound and see how things have been going. Audio down. Okay, is the audio back? I've got the chip from the, are we still alive? Everybody's there? Yeah. Actually for a tester, just for a second, when I'm off the actual video, if I change the audio for a second, if I turn off, If I un unplug this mic for a sec, I'm going to try adding another audio source that computer. Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? I've added the audio from this MacBook, the MacBook that's running the stream. Can you hear it or not? Extremely faintly. Okay, this man going up, 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 up. Testing now. Testing now. Up, 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 up. Okay, we'll leave it there. But remind me now when we go back to starting the video, I have to turn off this mic before I plug in the other one. Okay, I'm going to disappear for a sec. I have to take this video chip and put it in my laptop here and have a look at the video. So take care of yourself for a couple of minutes. I'm really sorry about the scrambled nature of the stream today, but uh, that's, things are what they are. That was a quick test. There was no video on the card. Good thing we tested this. <laughs> okay, back to the drawing board. Let's see what went wrong. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, switching audio back. Sorry, this one's coming. Testing, one, two, three. The audio seems to be back. Hi, thank you. Okay, I don't know, there was no, the video card was blank. There was nothing on it, so I don't know what I've done. Back to the beginning, try again. This is why we do tests. Okay, try it again. Audio recording is on. It's counting up one, two, three. The video, I don't know, but a moment ago I pressed the red button and I saw red on the viewfinder, so it would seem to be recording. Let's give it another go. I won't go as long as I did last time because I just want to see what's happening to the video. Thanks for your patience, guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. How's the light and stuff? It's different anyway, so we can't tell. Okay. All right, here we go. Sound sick. Quiet in the recording studio, please. Okay, so much for the woodblock prints themselves. What else is there to talk about today? At this point in the update message last year, I think I probably got a bit excited and I eagerly brought out two prints from our eight views of cats to show you. They had turned out so well and I was so happy to have them finished. You can see images here. Well, here we are a year later. Do I have two more cats to show you? Uh, one more cat to show you? In a word, no. This isn't from lack of interest on my part, nor of course on the part of potential designers. More than a year ago, I decided on the images for the next two prints in the series, and work has been underway. The block set for the evening bell was finished ages ago. It might even have been in last year's update video, I don't remember. And the block set for Descending Geese is now nearly done. The problem at this end, blah de blah blah de blah let's test, let's test. I think I have a problem with shadows. I lift my hand up and the shadow comes on my face. Let's see what happens here. Okay, audio going off. The recording, I mean audio recording going off. And I have to unplug the mic again, I'm sorry, to go and get the chip out of the camera. Excuse me a second. I gotta remember to turn that off, obviously. Look at that, lucky there. That music clue means there's an email from one of my daughters. Anybody recognize the music clip? Chocolate egg for anybody who recognizes the music clip. Six gigabytes, so we've got something here. The red light is on now. The red light is on. <coughs> Try again, this is why we do tests. Guys. 
the light and stuff. It's different anyway, so we can't tell. Okay. Sound seat. Quiet in the recording studio, please. Okay, so much for the woodblock prints themselves. What else is there to talk about today? At this point in the update message last year, I think I probably got a bit excited, and I eagerly brought out two prints from our eight views of cats to show you. They have turned out so well, and I was just so happy to have them finished. You can see images here. Well, here we are a year later. Do I have two more cats to show you? One more? I have a problem with shadows. I lift my hand up and the shadow comes up. It might even have been in last year's update video. I don't remember. And the block set for descending geese is now nearly done. The problem at this end, bloody blah, 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 blah. Okay, we have a cut, it seems okay, there are problems, the light is too dim, I'm seeing it quite bright here, but and I've got the lights here as close as I dare. It seems too dim, and my shirt, my god, I could have found an iron, couldn't I? Not much I can do about it at this point. Okay, let me put the chip back in the camera and we might try a take here. Anything I should note about the chat here? Sorry to ignore you guys. The mic is peaking, and the microphone that you're hearing is running through the monitor of the recorder. So it's not the audio that will actually be recorded into the video. It is peaking and it's not, that's not the audio that is going on to record, so. John says the main light could be higher. I don't know, I can try it if you like, sir. You, you know more about this than I do, so sure, let me try it. If it'll go up more, I think it will. Yeah, I think so. Up we go. But also, too, the light I'm seeing is quite different. The light I'm seeing now in the camera that's doing Twitch seems actually okay. My shirt is bright, this is good, this is clear. The one from this camera was quite different. Well, I can play with that later. Okay, anyway, I'll keep up, yeah. Thanks for the support, guys, okay. All right, let's try a take. Now the thing about this is this take, I can, you know, cut and do bit by bit through the talk, that's okay, but at the end of this, we are going to live stick a knife in here and open this box, and I can only do that once, so. <laughs> Whatever, also I'm not quite sure. When it comes time to open this, the main camera's there, I've got this stand. I'll put this, I guess, on the stand. I'll go, oh, I better grab a knife, I'll pull the microphone out. That's a good point. Thank you, thank you for reminding me. Get a knife ready here. So I'm really not sure what's inside here. So at the proper point, when it gets to the video here, now the big moment, let's open this. I'm not quite sure what to do. I can sit here and cut here. It's two cuts on the top, and I guess there's a cut on the bottom. Then it, I guess it will pop open, and I suppose if I put it back on the stand and lift it up, I'm not sure what's inside, but then I could take whatever's inside outside, do the thing with the box, and put the plaque back on the stand. I guess that's okay. Later I can do B-roll, you know, sh clawing, showing it close up. Is that gonna work? Any advice here? Yes, I know the mic is clipping. That's not the, the... Thanks guys, okay, okay, okay. But I'll turn it down. Is it, is it the volume is too high?
Someone says, be careful not to leak any address. The only address on here is our business address, which is public information. It's this shop. The address that it was sent from, it's that famous place. It's called Society Awards. It's in Grove in, uh, in Nebraska. Can I? There's, no, there's no state marked here. Oklahoma comes from Grove, Oklahoma, the company called Society Awards. They're the people, they don't make the Oscars, but they make almost all the other awards that are given out, uh, Emmys and, and you name it, whatever. And YouTube uses that company to make, their, to make their plaques. So as soon as it came in, we saw from Society Awards in Oklahoma, we knew what this was. The way it's described, well, we'll talk about this in the video. The way it's described on the package too is great. <laughs> Let's try it. If I flub it, I can fake some tape, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I can fake some tape, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna unplug again, replace the card in the camera. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Okay, video recording is, oops, it's scrolling my script. Back to the beginning, please. Hi, there you go. Okay, recording is activated. I saw the red button. There's no towel hanging in front of the lens like there was yesterday. Here we go again. Audio is now activated. Please don't worry about the audio levels. The levels inside the recorder here are fine. What you're hearing is a headphone output which is being distorted. I'm sorry about that. If I knew more about this and had much more time and had six assistants, we could do a better job with the audio there. Okay, thanks guys, thanks guys, thanks guys. Haircut, yeah, 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 haircut. Like I can control that. Okay, glasses off. Piece of wood is ready, the knife is ready, this is ready. We might get through to the end of this, who knows? There's a light shining there, it's on me. Light, tuck your shirt in. And no, this is not the same shirt I used in last year's update video. I do have more than one. I've got three. And my God, I think I look tired and I know why. Okay, let's give this a go. Cheer up, Dave, smile. Let's just run this thing. It takes about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. If it all goes as, as it should go, the video you will now see will be the video that goes up to YouTube and you were part of it. Makeup, yeah. Button the left sleeve. I just did. I buttoned the left sleeve. I buttoned the right sleeve. I buttoned everything I can do. The audio is running. That's running. Let's just do this thing. Stress, no stress in my life, no stress. Audio sync. Good one. Let's do this. Okay, so much for the woodblock prints themselves. What's left to talk about in this update message? At this point in last year's message, I think, I think my eyes got brighter and I eagerly brought out a couple of prints from the Eight Views of Cats series to show you. They had turned out so well and I was really happy to have them finished and out into the world. You can see the photographs here.
Now, here we are a year later. Do I have any more cats to show you? Uh, another two? Uh, another one? Well, in a word, no, I'm sorry. This isn't from lack of interest on my part, nor on the part of potential designers who are still flooding us with submissions. More than a year ago, I decided on the images for the next two prints in the series, and work has actually been underway. I think it's possible that even in last year's update video, I showed you the key block for the evening bell. The color blocks were then printed, and color printing, has, test printing has been really, really going underway all the time. The problem at this end has been finding printing time for it. You saw the growth of those bars on the sales graph back at the beginning of this video. And every millimeter of those bars represents hundreds and hundreds of woodblock prints. And they take planning and the sizing and then of course the printing. It's one color, another color, sheet by sheet by sheet. It has been an absolutely insane amount of work for our entire team this past year. But we've done it. We covered the orders, we got the prints made and out the door. But the downside of that success has been that a lot of other things simply did not get done. I showed you a few minutes ago. Oh, blah, 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 blah. I've goofed it up here. Goofed it up. Sorry about this. This is me and my, my cue cards here. The left switch moves forward to the next card. The right switch moves back. The left switch moves forward, and I hit the wrong switch a moment ago, and by the time I figured out what I was doing, we were dead. Okay, no problem. <coughs> Cut! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, audio down. I mean, rec audio recording down. And here we go again. I have to go back behind the camera. <laughs> Okay, the audio is recording. The camera back there is recording. I emptied the other f empty file and did it. So my mother's here. Good morning, mom. How you doing? You're a bit confused. <laughs> Whatever. This is how sausages are made. This is how YouTube videos are made. Oh, also, this shouldn't have been there. That was wrong anyway. Look at that. So it was bad anyway. You should have reminded me. Maybe you did remind me. Okay. There's just so many details to keep track of here. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Okay, let's try it again. That's recording. This is recording. The mic is actually plugged in. Been there, done that. The props are ready to pick up. The knife is ready. Foot switch is ready. We're back at the beginning of the script. Silence in the studio, please. Mr. Bell, take your place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's give this a go. Sound sync.
And there's my foot mark, my finger mark. Okay, let's go. Okay, so much for presenting the woodblock prints themselves. What's left to talk about in this update video? Now, at this point in last year's video, I think my eyes got bright and I got excited and I eagerly brought out two beautiful prints from our eight views of cats to show you. You can see photographs here. They turned out so well and I was very, very happy to have them finished. Well, here we are a year later. So I should have two more ready, right? Well, in a word, I'm sorry, I don't have them. This isn't from lack of interest on my part, nor on the part of the potential designers who are still flooding us with submissions. More than a year ago, I decided on the images for the next two prints in the series, and work has been underway. I think the block for Evening Bell, I perhaps even showed it to you in the video a year ago, and the blocks for Descending Geese are now nearly almost finished. The problem at this end has been finding printing time for it. You saw the growth of those bars on the sales graph I showed you a few minutes ago. And every, every millimeter of those bars represents hundreds of woodblock prints. And my God, the planning and the sizing and the printing. It's one color and then another color, sheet by sheet by sheet. It has been an incredibly insane amount of work for our entire team this past year. But they did it. We've covered the orders and we got thousands of prints made and out the door. But the downside of that kind of success has been that a lot of other things simply did not get done. Proof copies of that evening bell print. I've got many, many proof copies, but no final yet. Those color blocks for the descending geese, I told you, proofing them, get serious. I can't even think about it. What else? Ramen cats. Do you remember ramen cats? That's the third design in the sushi cat series. Blocks are all done. They've been done for ages. It's waiting for the next round of proofing. Long-time viewers might remember the Zenkoji Bon Odori, the dancers at Zenkoji Temple. Remember that one? That hasn't even had its initial proofing yet. <laughs> Tools, <laughs> excuse me, people keep emailing me asking me about the tools, our wonderful little tool set. We've been talking about that now for it's perhaps 10 years. Look at these photos. We have drawers full of blades, handles, string, brass sleeves, but no time and no staff to help me put it all together. On top of that, I'm not sure if I should talk about this because it might just be too disheartening. The craftsmen who we contracted to make the top rank group of our range of blades, he let us know in October that he was retiring. Actually, no, he wasn't planning to retire. He let us know he had retired. He had become 70. No successor, he's had enough. There will be no more blades from him. That reminds me of an episode a few weeks back. I had a phone call from the family who makes our paper. This is the only paper in this entire country that suits our particular requirements. A phone call from them, I tell you, my heart stopped. <laughs> Luckily, it wasn't that phone call. He just wanted to clarify something with one of our orders. But for a couple of seconds there, I was thinking, it's all over. And still speaking of things that didn't get done over the past few months, a big one has been, of course, YouTube videos. I can't blame anybody else for this one. This is on me. I have a thick file full of plans for interesting videos. I have a wonderful collection of prints up there, and every time I go in the room, they're all yelling, choose me, choose me, <laughs> for the next David's Choice video. There's no shortage of good intentions. I've just let myself get crippled by the endless work and the endless firefighting, running this business with now more than, there's more than 20 people working here. A person around my age listening to this might remember if you were sort of into science fiction books back then, 50s, 60s we're talking about, you might remember a story by Robert Heinlein. Heinlein, is that how you pronounce his name? Somewhere in the story was an episode about a, about a guy, he'd been tasked with designing a rocket, I think it was. But it turned out that he was so buried in the, the busyness of the business around him that not much rocket work was getting done. 
And I remember what happened. Vividly, I remember what happened. Somebody arrived, realized what was going on, and, and started to bark orders and commands left and right. And like minutes later, the engineer was happy at work drawing pictures of rockets, and other people were doing all the busyness. Now, funnily enough, I've actually lived that situation the other way around. Back when I worked in the school music business in Canada, this would be in the late 1970s, the owner of the place, a very competent and very driven man, had ended up in that very situation. He had started the business and successfully grown it, but by this time he was now just drowning in it. It was mountains of paperwork. There's people calling him every minute, the bankers wanting a credit report, and uh, the school music truck has a flat tire, and, and whatever, just on and on and on it went. Now, I had been working there for a few years in a partly clerical, partly sales function, kind of de facto running the sheet music side of things, along with this and that, other jobs. So he knew my skill set, knew what I was good at, and he knew what I wasn't good at. And he made me an offer. He would move out of the building into a little office in a separate place a couple of blocks away. He would handle the big picture stuff, uh, convincing the bank manager to extend our line of credit yet one more time. He would fly to Chicago to negotiate with the major you know, saxophone suppliers. He would do the schmoozing with the provincial superintendent of school music. This was stuff he was really good at. I, in turn, would move into his big corner office. I would start wearing a tie, he was kind of adamant about that, and I would become the general manager. I would run the place, inventory control, sheet music department, manage the salesman, hiring, firing, control the instrument, rental system, create the advertising, do the bidding on the school board contracts, you name it. I was young, I was energetic, I was skilled, I loved it. I sat there with like a telephone on each year, the big desk, the in-basket is piled high, dictating letters to a secretary. I planned things, executed the plans, traveled all over Western Canada to visit the big clients. I ran the place from that office. From his office across the street, he provided the underlying vision and direction where we were going. He was the primary energy source to keep it all moving. Without him and his vision and energy, the place would have withered and died. Without me and my ability to organize things and keep it all ticking, it would have fallen into chaos. He and I worked together for, I don't know, four, maybe five years before I eventually decided to leave, to come to Japan and start my adventure here as a solo craftsman. Now, little did I know, or could possibly have foreseen that some, it's 36 years later now, here I would be in his exact situation. I had the vision, start a company, I build it up, then you find that starting a business is a whole lot different than actually, you know, running it day to day. And the biggest mistake I have made, and I'm still making to this very minute, is in remembering that old science fiction story. Because I remember that, I've been kind of waiting, waiting for that savior type person to come along, shuffle me off into a corner with my, my carving bench and a print collection and video camera to, to think about, you know, the meaning of life and stuff while somebody else takes over. But that's not how it works. If you sit and wait for something to happen, well, we all know how that ends up. So I don't know, and I, I'm honestly not even sure why I am telling you all of this as part of this video. I've touched on some of these things during the Twitch streams now and then, and subsequently I get emails. Hi, I mean, I can help you. But there's nothing I can do with those. It's a random email from a random person on the other side of the planet who, of course, has no permission to work in Japan, who doesn't speak Japanese, couldn't work with the staff here. Good intentions aside, there's simply not a whole lot that such a person can do for us.
Now at this point, I should be careful to add something else, because I know what, it, what will happen. Telling you this is nothing to do with money or lack of it. I'm not asking for this. We're actually totally okay in that department right now. You saw the sales figures. Our margins seem to be calculated pretty well, and the Patreon support is helping a huge amount, so our bank accounts are actually fine. If, if that person came through the door right now, I would be in a position to sit down and make a reasonable offer of employment. This isn't about money. So what's the answer? Well, I don't really have one, other than to say that the way things are going with the growth we are experiencing, the situation is really not sustainable for much longer, and I will have to figure this out one way or another. Okay, now as usual, I see the little notes on the index cards and it expands and I've blathered on for too long and I certainly can't end this update video with that overview of things that I didn't get done this year. As I mentioned back at the beginning, the overall situation for us is wonderful. We've had a year full of fabulous productivity, bringing beautiful new prints to life and spreading them all around the world. Some competent new people have joined us in the office, uh, over in shipping, and at the printing bench too, a new printer came this year. And we have not only survived in this difficult pandemic environment, we have flourished. Now, I want to end on that positive note, and I have a great way to do that. Viewers of our Twitch stream, if they have been watching long enough, might remember the arrival of this package one morning last summer. They quickly realized what it was, and everybody in the chat was like, open it, open it, open it. But I demurred. I too know what is inside. The label, we'll close up later, the label of this is kamotsu, which typically translates as, it's a generic word for goods or freight. But an old fashioned alternate reading of those two characters Kamotsu is takara mono, treasure. And I wanted to open this treasure at a place and time where I could gather our staff members around so that they could be part of it. A few days went by, I couldn't get that arranged to get all the staff together. A few weeks went by, we did get everybody together one day, it poured rain and we couldn't do our plan. I just couldn't get it together. And now here we are, half a year later, and this treasure box is still unopened. So yeah, enough is enough. I'll just have to open it here this morning by myself. But I'm not quite by myself. YouTube video watchers here, you can't see this from the viewpoint of the camera recording this for our video, but there is actually another camera sitting next to it. And that camera is, as I speak, streaming live to our Twitch channel. Excuse me a minute. Okay, hi Dan. <laughs> Thank you for your patience while I have been recording the previous segment of this video. I hope you have been enjoying chatting together and I guess the mods have been keeping everything under control, I'm sure. We can now get to the part that you guys have been waiting for. Now, which camera to look at here, I don't know, it's gonna get confusing. Anyway, let's get to it. I have my knife. Now, a tiny bit of background for this. If I can, if I can paraphrase Al Gore here for a moment. Back in 1989, I invented social media. What? <laughs> My project to make a set of 100 woodblock prints of old Japanese poets was underway back in the late 1980s, and I wanted to communicate with the people who were supporting my work. I hit on the idea of doing so by means of a newsletter published every three months. In that little publication, I talked about how the work was progressing. I showed photos of the workshop and I explained this and that about traditional woodblock printmaking. This was all very well, but I also did two other things with that newsletter, and these, I believe, changed my life. I included, of course, stories and photos from behind the scenes. The readers not only saw me carving and printing, they saw me visit the man who supplied my wood blocks. They saw me hanging up laundry, doing household chores, and they saw my children year by year growing up. 
they came to understand that that little newsletter wasn't a promotional product. It was a way to bring them into a much better understanding of how their prints had come into existence and of who this guy was and of why he was doing this thing. Now this was vitally important, as was the second point. The little newsletter was interactive at least as much as was possible back in 1989 and 1990. They read it and they sent me cards and letters. And I included many of their comments and responses in subsequent issues. Comment threads in 1990. People became active participants in my work, not just customers. And absolutely, I believe that that little newsletter was key to my ability to being able to make a living at this craft over the course of the quarter century that I worked as a solo craftsman. So, given that background, I of course should have jumped on YouTube the first day it went online. I'm sorry to admit that actually I was late to that party. I wasn't prescient enough to understand that a business model like that could actually survive. And of course, I had no idea it would not only survive, it would become such a massively important part of our global culture. But I did finally get it. So I created our first video in January of 2011, something over 10 years ago. As is normal with these things, it was kind of slow going at first, of course. I didn't really feel that I was going to be any good at it, so I didn't go at it with much enthusiasm. Then along came Ukiyo-e Heroes, and it's massively, massively successful Kickstarter campaign. And suddenly, well, here we are. Our channel reached the required, uh, what is it? It's 100,000 subscribers for this sometime last spring. So here we are with our silver play button. This is heavy. It's also interesting to note that we are now at something just over 150,000 subscribers just over six months later. But that's not a motivation for us. Building subscriber numbers isn't something I'm going to think about. The channel, of course, has never been there to make money. We've never even thought about monetizing it at all. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, I had really wanted to open this surrounded by my team membership because this, of course, is an award to all of them, too, for their hard work and their skills. So it falls to me to speak for everybody here when I say to all of you, both of the people over there on the Twitch stream and those of you who are watching this YouTube video, we thank you all very, very much. Whether you have bought prints or just enjoyed the online collection or just watched and commented on some videos or maybe just hung out in the Twitch chats, we very much appreciate your support of our activities and your willingness to participate in our life. None of what we do would be possible without people who are willing to do those things and for that we are all extremely grateful. We can only hope that you're having even half as much fun as we are. Thank you very much. Now, what do I do with this thing? I think we might do it like they do after the Stanley Cup. I know, doesn't each team member get to take it home for a while to show their friends? But after it's going around the entire group, I guess it will come back here. I don't think I want to be one of those YouTubers who hangs it up in the background of each video. That doesn't quite seem right to me, bragging a bit too much. So maybe, maybe we'll hang it in the front window. I don't think there can be many of these things here in Asakusa, and maybe it will join our large rickshaw cart poster in becoming a local attraction. Anyway, that is now most certainly enough. Thank you for your patience with me through this always overly long presentation. Just one more thing. You saw my proof copies of the new print series earlier in this video. During the process of step-by-step -step printing them, I had two cameras running near my printing bench. Stand by. <laughs> Good night for now, and see you next time. Nineteen minutes and fifty-two seconds. Let me stop the camera.
do we read it? What does it say? Presented to David Bowl for passing 100,000 subscribers. It's only got my name. It's too bad. It doesn't say Moko Hankan or the staff or anything else. Okay, 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 okay. Where's my glasses? I can't see. It seems like we got a take there. It seems like we got a take. Is the audio okay now here? I'm speaking to the same. I'll put mic, put Mac mic back on. Hang on a sec. It, uh, Okay, what I can try. Let me do this. Let me unplug the mic. I'll unplug the mic. I'll go sound. I'm going to plug the mic into the computer. doesn't go. It's a four thing. It's a mic with four, one, two, three, four, and I guess the audio jack is not the right size. I have no idea. I'm sorry. No idea. No idea. Okay, okay, okay. There's not really much else I can, the mic is still a bit hot. Let's turn it down a bit, down a bit, down a bit. 26 dB, 31 dB, minus 31. Okay. Okay, and as you might guess, I don't have a specific show and tell prepared today, probably. Uh, I'm sorry. I know. That's it. I'm kind of <laughs> setting this up. I'm going to be sending pictures, whatever. It, it's insane. I, know. I would really, really like one day. I chatted about having a helper and other stuff. And if I could dream a dream and wake up tomorrow morning, as I mentioned, there would be a manager here to do all that stuff. I would hire somebody. We've got the money. If I could find a, a video student or something, or, or a professional videographer, I don't even know. Hire somebody and uh, to do videos. So I, I don't think it would be one a week, but one every two weeks. I'd prepare the scripts, get the prints ready, whatever. The team would do stuff, and they'd say, okay, Dave, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, you okay for it? And I'd come down here before 9 o'clock. I'd sit on a chair. They would do audio checks, and they would surround me with cameras and lights. And we'd do take one, and I'd do take two, and take three, and we could make a ton of, ton of beautiful videos. It comes up all the time. People, you know, interns or something, they weren't doing that in Japan. We contacted, I went to a film school here. There had been people from a film school who came in and did a little mini documentary about us, and they did a wonderful job. It was a cool little, you know, as, as a class project. So we went to the film school and said, put us in touch with these kids. And they did. And they just can't do it. The kids are in their fourth year, they're super busy, and they all plan on getting a job. They're going to go like to work for a TV company and stuff like this. None of them would even think of doing anything independently. So if anybody out there has any kind of knowledge of a, a guy or a person here in Japan who does video, could do video, who would work for us, work a day a week, or, or a couple of days a week, or, or on contract, or whatever. We want somebody who can, who can do the job. Certainly the filming and the editing, I would like to be involved with the editing, but, uh, you know. The sound is fading away, it's Dave who's fading away, I'm tired. <laughs> whatever. I don't want to tell you what time I went to bed last night, but I was a good boy. I did my pool this morning, even with all this waiting, I did my pool this morning, 20 laps in the pool. If anybody's got info, flood me with it, email it to me, phone me with it, anything. I will, of course, any information whatsoever. But one thing, please, to mention, last time we talked about this, a guy, he, whatever, he emailed from New York, said, good, I'll come over. I can do a couple of days a week for you. You fly me over, I'll do it, fly me back, whatever. And I don't really think I can do that, hire a professional videographer from New York to fly over here for two days and fly back to make each one of my YouTube videos. That's sort of not the practical s solution. I'm not trying to do the cheap thing here, work for me and you can get your name in lights. No, but I don't think I can afford 
a New York Pro and his flight and all the other stuff. The other part of it, it's got to be somebody local because you saw what Cameron was doing. When Sugasan is printing upstairs, she finishes one color, she calls down, ready to print, it's film. So you, f you film her making one color and then that's it for the next two hours. So it's only five, 10, 15 minutes every couple of hours. It was fine. Cameron was doing a really good job of that, but uh, whatever. Anyway, 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 I think we should. Uh, no, uh, I think we should sign off here. It's Thursday morning. I'll be back. I guess Saturday morning here. This video. I'm going to spend the rest of the day here. Now I'm going to take a little nap. Then the rest of the day here, I'm going to do part one and part two of this video because I've got to do it with the same shirt and same hair and same lights and all that kind of stuff. And the video, if all goes well, should be up on YouTube tomorrow or perhaps the day after me, <laughs> Christmas video. <laughs> and I'll be back here Saturday morning, although I have no clue what I will be doing. The only work desperately waiting for me is more sizing, but can you really handle three sizing streams in a row? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, okay, as I said. I'm out of here. Thank you very much for your cooperation and your support, and I'm sorry that this isn't a really professional stream today, but uh, things are what they are. Yeah, and again, the audio that you're hearing is not the audio that was recorded. We recorded straight to a digital audio with proper balancing and everything else. The audio you've heard here is patched through three different sources. Okay, I'm out of here, guys. Thank you very, very, very much, and I'll see you next time. No outside camera because the outside camera is inside. So. Bye for now. And Mom, if you're still there, thanks Mom. I'll give you a call by on Skype, okay? If you're still there, hang on, I'll give you a phone call. Bye for now, guys. Thank you. <laughs>